Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of What Are We Reading, or as Josh would like to say, What Are We Reading? That's a great question, Josh, and you know what? I'm going to let you answer this. What are you reading? What have you been reading? I've been reading a lot lately. Oh, tell me about you it. You know, um, well... I read Champions. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that came out today. Issue 18, I believe. Or if you're listening to this uh, to m- when we post it, it'll be yesterday. March 28th. Um, I, it's, I've it's i been reading Champions since this came out, and it's uh, written by Mark Wade. Uh, when it first started out, it had a gr- I thought it was going to be great. Um, it's kind of like falling down, derailing, like most of our podcast. And... <laughs> and uh, it's, it's slowly trying to pick itself back up, but as me and Jake have mentioned millions of times before, I think Wade just needs to take a little break right yeah, now. Yeah, a little sabbatical, but it wouldn't be the worst. But yeah. you've also been, correct me if I'm wrong, reading another series by Mark Wade that you were like, wow, this is really Mark Wade at his best. I thought we weren't going to talk about it. Oh, we're going <laughs> to tell the people at home that we're going to talk about it next week. Okay. Well, um, me and Jake this week decided that uh, we didn't agree upon this. It's like kind of like a subconscious thing yeah it was, it was like it was like the stars aligned yeah you know? it was weird it was like our boners touched <laughs> and um we've been reading mark wade's uh irredeemable yep and i started this i just need to preface this i started this series years ago but finally got the very last volume in the shop uh you fucker i thought last you started week. It this week no i started it years ago but i haven't been able to get a hold of it because all the, tr- the trade paperbacks were out of print so they reprinted these hardcover like premiere yeah, deluxe edition, editions shop. so i finally got volume five in a couple weeks ago and i, fi- I finally finished it and that is one of the most brilliant endings to a series I've ever read Shut in my life. Shut the fuck up. I so, haven't finished that. I've okay. got like four I know. more issues left. And so we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, we'll talk about it next quick. week. Yep. But yeah. Um, so that's Mark Wade at its best. That's Mark Wade at his best. So that, how do you feel? That was that, back in 2010. How do you feel that compares to uh, Mark Wade's go at the champions This now? It feels like now, it's like when you read, when you go from reading that to reading what it is champions now, you kind of feel like he's playing it safe. He's hitting all your normal Marvel uh, team up cliches. The some of the reasons why I do not really like uh, like superhero team up books. Um, other than Bendis. Other than Bendis. <laughs> um, There's your plug. I know. Like he like that. I was trying to go this whole podcast without saying Bendis <laughs> once. Did, I didn't even read. One. I didn't it's even. It's even... almost like we went a whole Wednesday without talking about fucking Kite Man. I you know. brought him up. I know. Let's go ahead. See, I was like, because I, I like, I'm not even going to read Jessica Jones because I'm not going to review it, even though it's the last Bendis Jessica Jones issue. And like, so I'm like, I'm, you know what? These people have to be tired of hearing me talk about Jessica Jones and, and fucking sucking Bendis's cock. Yeah. And so, uh, but regardless, I don't like, um, but. Champions, when it first came out, it didn't feel that way. It felt like it was going to be really original, different, and it felt – I liked it. I liked what it stand for, what it was meaning, and then it just started kind of going downhill. Did down it feel hill. like it started to get kind of studio notes? It did. Yeah. And it started – like, and then they did a crossover with the Avengers, with the Worlds Collide, and then it just got really bad. And then it's starting to kind of pick itself back up. But this issue, this last issue that just came out, um, what happened is, is there's Viv, which is Vision's daughter, Okay. And in a few issues back uh, back in the world uh, collide, she becomes human, and Vision creates a copy of her, this Viv 2.0, and it's this like evil version of her that's an android, right? And she fucking doesn't like this human. She's like, I'm gonna fucking kill this bitch. She's trying to steal <laughs> Daddy's love, and then and she like kills, you know, uh, this robotic version of her which is out of self defense. And they're trying to find her. This is what the whole issue is. It's them trying to find the human Viv who ran off and hide because she feels bad that she killed her quote-unquote sister. And I'm spoiling this for you guys because I just need you to understand how much of a cliche this is. Mm-hmm. But then Viv's like, Dad, would you like being a human? And he's like, no, I'm happy the way I am. And he goes, and she's like, I was. And then she becomes back to be an android and the classic marvel like panel she like busts out of a cell in the in the corpse of her sister okay so she's wearing her her sister's corpse around and okay it's a just weekend at so, bernie is a little bit of uh i don't know like, the main reason why yeah the main reason why i wanted to talk about this and also cyclops is the team spoilers um but the reason why I was wanting to talk about it, the reason why I, I, I thought to bring it up is because I've been reading Irredeemable, which we'll talk about more next week once I finish it, and it's just, it tell, it shows you how much difference of time has, like how much a writing can change because of a publisher or because of the limits that the writer is given right. or because of what kind of, so, uh, so, like, I mean, I don't know like what kind of like mental, mental state he yeah. is in, but I do know that he did just have something 
big happen to them, and that can cause a rider to start kind of, you know, maybe get distracted yeah. by other things that are going on in his life, and it, you know, he's not yeah. putting his best work forward. And that, and that's just all I'm trying to say. That's the yeah. one thing. Plus, that he's also doing multiple titles, which yeah. again divides his attention. Yeah, and so that's just the main thing. It's like it it points it out even more. Yeah. Since I'm reading good Wade right now, and then I read something that was just like mediocre, mediocre Wade. Yeah. I think it's just a testament too that uh, when when a writer gets onto a, a book they truly love, they, they came up with the premise on their own, and they're like they just want to give it their all. It sh- shows how much they can you know shine. So if you got, if you guys have a writer out there like that who you really love their work on something, go check out their indie stuff. I mean they pour their heart and soul into that work. So Snyder, okay, Scott Snyder does um, did a great Batman run. Does horrible everything else now. Yeah. Well, okay. he also does. Was it witches? He does witches yeah. with image, um, and that is a great. It's a great book. It's not for everybody, but I, I guarantee, like Dallas, you would love witches. He seems it up has with a co- horror conflict. It has like a horror feel to it. It's great. Tell me a little about it. Well, hold on. I'll, Maybe not, outside not of this, uh, he he also teamed up with Capullo again on a book with image called Reborn. Yeah, I haven't read that. I haven't either, but I, uh, I hear it's I hear it's pretty decent. Okay, so Dallas also Dallas is here with us. Hello, say hello. Hello. All right, and you. What did you read this week that you'd like to talk about? <clears throat> I wouldn't like to talk about it, but I feel like we're gonna have to talk about it. Okay, because so it's you, one of the big events. Yeah. There, so if anyone who's reading this does are listening doesn't know that a lot of big issues came out today. Oh, yeah. So we've got a lot of things we're gonna talk about. So we're gonna try and breeze through some of these things. But um, Dallas and I both read this issue, so go ahead. Doomsday Clock number four. Been waiting, what, two months now? Yeah, they, they got they, pushed back. They took a break and then it got pushed well, back. Well, I think it? Doomsday Clock is now being released every two months. That's awesome. So that's a great way to keep your readership up, oh, right? Yeah. But yeah. It, and I, we talked about, I, I said this last time we did the podcast and I reviewed Doomsday Clock number three. Pick it up. It's slowing down. You need to speed up the process a little bit. We've been waiting how long? Oh, when you said pick it up, I thought you were telling our listeners to pick this book up. I mean, if if you're a DC fan and if you're a Watchmen fan and if you're an event fan, pick it up. But if you're just a common reader that likes to randomly grab comics that look interesting, don't pick it up. It it hasn't picked up already. This issue is mainly about the new Rorschach. I'm not going to give a whole lot of spoilers. Um... But I, uh, me personally, I didn't need to know who Rorschach was. I liked the mystery, and I would have liked the story to push further as opposed to expand on Rorschach just because it's a 12-run series. Right. Um, for me, actually, this is probably my favorite issue of the Doomsday Clock so far. I'm not saying it was a good issue, but this is the this is the only issue that kind of felt like it focused up, and it's telling a story that I'm following, and I'm like, okay, I get this. There, there's, a, there's a story to be told, and they're going from one spot to another. The other ones feel so unfocused. There's just random shit happening, panels that are I, I'm reading with – weird news stories that don't pertain to Definitely really real anything. Sick. And honestly, I, I love Jeff Johns, but I really feel like this is almost a cheap imitation of Alan Moore's style it for is. Doomsday Clock, and I don't think it works very well. I think Gary Frank's art is beautiful. Oh, yeah, I the love, art, there's no yeah. question on the artwork in any of the books, even the covers, too. They're, they're excellent. Right, but this is the first Doomsday Clock issue where I'm like, okay, I can follow the story. I understand what's going on. I can understand some of the symbolism and metaphors that are being used, right. and they're being used effectively. In the last three issues, I didn't feel that. I just felt so scattered. I was, I, I, I was just bored with it. So while this issue feels more like an interlude, like who is is the new Rorschach, and it doesn't seem to progress the story that they've set so far forward. It was it was an issue that I could actually kind of dig in my heels a little bit and decide and go, okay, I can follow this story. I understand what's going on, and it actually has me a little bit more invested in the Rorschach character. Whether you cared to know who he was or not, I didn't think it was like this big mystery. Like, oh, who the fuck is he? It was just like I knew they were going to tell me at some point. Right. So this is the issue where I was like, okay, they finally told me. I would have rather it been a tie-in issue as opposed to a Doomsday Clock issue. I, and I can see that because now you're like, okay, we've only got eight more issues to go, right. and you got a big story to tell and a lot of ground to cover. Right. Yeah. So um, I've, I've been – okay, so I haven't read this new issue. I have been reading it, and I'm a huge Watchmen fan. Uh, if, you don't, if anyone doesn't know, he's got a Dr. Manhattan tattoo on his forearm. I love it. Okay. Um, but – so you're saying this is like your favorite out of all of them, though? So far, yeah. They're all it, really slow. It, it, this is the only one that's that's. I mean, it's it's slow in the sense that it's character building. Okay, so what you're saying this is like the the hottest single mom at a Golden Corral. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't go to <laughs> Golden Corral very often, exactly. if ever. But um, most people don't. I would just say this is this is the only <laughs> issue that you feel like you can follow, and there's a flow and a and like a melody to the story. You know what I mean? There's a and tempo to it. Yeah, I get that. I would have rather the main story been like that. The, they started to yeah. find the focus as opposed to what they gave us with this. Right. So you know, I'm like, a Watchmen fan too, but yeah. like 
Rorschach's journal and the Watchmen, it fit for me because it worked for the character, whereas this doesn't have Rorschach's journal, but it has, like, thought bubbles, and it, it kind of derails my reading. It's kind of got Rorschach's um, journal, but the thing is, too, again, in the past three issues of Doomsday Clock, I've had a, such a hard time reading this version of Rorschach, like his uh, internal monologuing. The- this one, it feels much more like Rorschach from the original Watchmen, whereas... Yeah, it's like it kind of broken up English, but it's still very understandable. I'm not tripping over the words, whereas I was in the first three issues. Right, and I will definitely agree that the first three were very broken up. This one is a lot more focused, but still to me, something about reading it does not give me Rorschach. And well, it, it's because it it's not, not I, Rorschach. I know it's not, but, but it, it's weird because it, it comes off as a cheap imitation, like you were saying. An well, imitation I, I, of the Alan whole Moore. series to me has been a cheap imitation of the original I Watchmen is what I'm saying. I not or disagree with you. Oh, I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that, what? Because your face said something completely yeah. different <laughs> while you shook your head no. To the, me, to me, like, even after I read it, I'm still reading it. I'm still getting it because I like Watchmen so much. But it feels like all they're doing, so far from what I read, I haven't read this issue, all it seems like is DC is sitting there going, like, okay, so, you know what, let's utilize this Watchmen fran- franchise. Let's fucking, melt, you know, like, beat this fucking dead well, horse. I think everyone was assuming this is going to be what start. like, this is going to give us the answers to Rebirth. And you're at 33% of the way through it now, and you don't have any inkling of a fucking answer. No. You know, yeah. and it is it is frustrating because it you're is. like, look, you're running out of issues. You have clearly set a 12-issue limit on this. You're running out of time. And then with you that, start you're to deliver. It out. Yeah. yeah. So time again. And I think it's just because Jeff Johns is working on the movie things. But, um, okay, let's move on to uh, Dark Knight's Metal, which is another big issue. This is number six. It's the end of Metal. And I think as of now, I'm the only one of us three who's read it, right? I haven't read it yet. I haven't yeah. got a chance to. Okay, so I'll give you a spoiler-free little review on it real quick. Thank you. Okay, so this issue was garbage. <laughs> there you go. It was garbage. You find out by the end of this, this book that Metal was nothing but a setup for another event. That's all this book was. It had one good moment in here, one really solid moment of maybe two or three pages that that's going on. And then everything just got fucked, where I was like, oh, okay, so this is what you've been building towards. Oh, no, bottom just fell out. Never fucking mind. And so at the end, of course, you know, it all ends happily ever after, building up to no justice. It's exactly what this whole thing was meant to be, was a build up to no justice. This is not a satisfying read, in my opinion. And um, it's weird because Capullo does all the art in, like, the last three pages. They went to Janin, who's been doing the Batman series, Kind of a weird difference in artistic styles between Capullo and his, but I, I don't want to spoil it for you, so I won't go into go into too much. But this whole this whole Dark Knight's Metal event was hogwash. Like this was just this was nothing but a setup event for another thing. That's all this was. So DC, what you're saying is DC is actually just like. We want all the events. <laughs> okay, so think think of think of everyone. It's, it's it's event inception. Think of it's an event okay. inside of an event inside of an event. No, it's not. It's it's not. It's think of Iron. What everyone complains about Iron Man two with it's a world setting up movie. It's dispendable. It's expendable. That's all of Dark Knight Metal. Dark Knight Metal is just Iron Man two. That's all this fucking thing is. I mean, I'll I'll like it more if uh, Mickey Rourke is in it. Mickey Rourke's not in it. God damn it. I fucking yeah. hate it. You're done dropping yeah. down. And I'll tell you this. Um, Dark Knight's wild hunt with the chimps and shit at the end, no purpose to that at all. It had no bearing on the really? fucking... St- nothing. Nothing. There's literally one panel with this goddamn chimp in it. God damn, in this entire I thing. Fucking, I fucking hate that book. Yeah, I do too. So, I still haven't read it. Yeah, it's Dallas, horrible. he's collected all it. the issues, but he hasn't read uh, like the majority of Dark right. Knight's metal. I, I was about to just throw this so. out there real quick. Jake's review on every single Dark Knight Metal issue has been garbage. <laughs> like, is, like, that's how he starts every single one off. Garbage this one is, this one is <clears throat> less garbage than the other main issue runs. Like, gotcha. one through five, it's less garbage than that. But it's right on par with, like, just as bad as the, the Aquaman, Batman the tie-in, the drowning yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah, it's about that. As far as overall quality, my favorite tie-ins were Batman Who Laughs and um, Murder Machine. Those were my favorite too. So, those are great. 
They're not great, but they're not bad. I loved them. Okay, that's great. All right, so we're going to move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to a few issues here. Um, Daredevil just hit its 600th issue. Way to go. Really, really solid issue. If you guys get a chance to read it, definitely pick this up. Um, this, If you're a collector, I think Daredevil number 600, that's a monumental milestone for any series. So get it just to get it. But um, it's got a great st- story. The end of the book is fucking killer. It's pretty goddamn awesome. And again, Charles Soule, who used to be a lawyer, uses a lot of his his background in writing this series. That's always nice. It's pretty cool. Um, Saga by uh, Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples just hit issue 50. I sent you guys a screenshot of the very <laughs> first, first page of that. You can't tell me you didn't like that one. <laughs> Uh, uh, it was interesting. It was interesting, <laughs> especially when I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> and I open up my phone, and it's like, oh, I got, oh, Jay. Oh, oh. Yeah, and then I click it, and it's just like, oh, close. I, I promise you I'm not a pervert. <laughs> <laughs> I promise all of you. <laughs> um, but no, you know, it, it's, a, it's an image title. It's an indie title that made it to 50 issues. Got to congratulate it there. But, again, the saga is one of my favorite series that's out right now. It was a good little issue. Not a, not a huge eventful issue, but a good, but a good issue. Um, the other two I'm going to mention real quick, uh, Hal Jordan, the Green Lantern Corps, number 41, cool little issue, kind of tie up the, the Green Lantern Corps versus like the House of Zod, basically, when Zod's on a uh, planet surrounded by, that orbits two yellow suns, so the dude's uber fucking powerful, um, and I think Jon Stewart has a great moment in this book. And then uh, Shadow Man number one. This is this is a book I knew absolutely nothing about. I'm like this cover is just beautiful. It's a it great nice cover. cover. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm gonna check this out. What it basically is is it's Ghost Rider, but it's like it's entwined with voodoo, like down on the bayou type magic. You know, like the Bourbon Street type of magic. God damn it, that sounds awesome. It's pretty. It's it's interesting. It's kind of cool. So it's like instead of praying to God, they're pl- praying to like the serpent gods and like shit like that. You know, so it's it's kind of brother voodoo meets Ghost Rider a oh, little nice. bit because the main character is a black guy and. And they're down living in Louisiana and shit like that. So it's a pretty neat little issue. Um, I'll probably read issue two just to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. And the last issue we're going to talk about today is something that we all read. Uh, Ghost Rider, number one, that, that uh, Damnation tie-in. I'm curious to hear your thoughts, Josh. I thought it was a pretty kick-ass uh, book. Um, it, I... The, it, this starts off exactly where the last uh, Doctor Strange Damnation uh, ended. If you don't re- know how that ended... You actually can go to the last podcast. Yeah. I think I pretty much you didn't, you talked didn't about what the, yeah. how it ended. And then on the back... It's so it's uh, pretty much Johnny Blaze is in hell. Because he died. Because he died. Yeah. And it's him and Ghost Rider on a mission. Separate entities, too. Se- yeah. yeah, and it is it is beautiful how it's all panned out. The mm-hmm. artwork's great. The storyline's great. And as I told Jake, I prefer uh, Johnny Blaze and Ghost Rider. As kind of like as a cop a, team. You know, like a, like a, yeah. a buddy cop mm-hmm. thing more than I actually enjoy you know them as one. Right. I, I couldn't agree more. Dallas, what were your thoughts? I did really like the interaction between the two. It was interesting dialogue, at least to see yeah. the personality differences and then the conversations and the ghostwriter. Like basically, they kept circling around everything, and it was, "What can you give me?" Like they kept getting to the point. He's like, "I'm still not getting it. What can you offer me, Johnny?" Like I, you're saying these things, but you're not offering me anything. Yeah. There's a there's a cool what do you bring to the fucking table? There's, right. a, there's a cool little parallel I think between the symbiote and the ghostwriter, like the spirit of vengeance ghostwriter, because mm-hmm. it's like it's like. It's a symbiotic relationship, right. you know what I mean? But yeah. anyway, go ahead. Um, artwork, fantastic. Fucking great. That was mm-hmm. awesome. Um, one of the best moments for me was the buddy cop thing. I know you just said that, but yeah. it, it, I wasn't expecting it. The first few panels didn't do it for me, and I stopped reading, and I looked up, and I was like, you know, I'm not really feeling this one. And he's like, really? Like, he had a, such a quick, absurd, like, reaction to me, and I was like, I mean, I'm going to keep reading it because we're talking about it, so I'm continuing through, and it just it clicked at a certain point for me. I was just like, this is really well. And then the other point was the time. They were explaining how time works. Yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like, my he's body like, just hit just the ground. Hit. Yeah. They're starting to recover. They're starting to get my body. Like, And he's my like, Fisto's smile is right. fading away. And yeah. And I just, I loved the buddy cop dialogue where he kept bringing him back. Like, nothing would make it better than you getting revenge on Mephisto. That would be the best thing. And he kept calling that out to him. Yeah. It was a good book. It was, and I gotta say, this is one of the very few times because I don't. I'm not. I admittedly, I've not read a ton of Ghost Rider. Neither have I. You know, and so this is one of the very few times I felt like Johnny Blaze had some humanity to him. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't an actual character. You know, he when he talks about, he's like, I'm just like some country bumpkin who mm-hmm. whose dad was, was a like, carny. Yeah, it was a carny. I was like, that's. 
you know, I never really thought of it that way, but he's dressed in a fucking leather jacket and jeans. It's like this guy came from fucking nothing and he becomes a ghost. Right. You know, it's it's one of the first times my brain kind of put that together. Um, and then I really, and I was telling you, you know, pay attention to the paneling and the artwork between Ghost Rider and uh, Johnny Blaze. And I thought it was really awesome to see that every time they're in a panel together, they're perfectly symmetrical to each mm -hmm. other. But the thing is, is like they're kind of off kilter. So like when um, there's that one panel where they're both in on the uh, motorcycle and they throw a chain back. If you'll notice, Johnny Blaze's chain goes upwards while... Uh, Ghost Riders goes downwards, but everything else is like a mirror opposite of each other. I, and I just like that that congruity between each panel with, that they shared. There's like there's always a mirrored opposite between the two of them. And I thought yeah. that was really well done. And I don't know how many people would pick that up if I'm just no. like. No, no, I, I, no, I, I, I definitely saw up. one panel, especially when it was the half and half. Yeah. You see both of them, and that's when I started to notice it from that point. Yeah, there was there was a panel that was of their face together, yep. but it was cut into thirds. It's so like one's fully Ghost Rider, the other's extreme side is fully Ghost Rider, or Johnny, and then the two, and the one that they shared is like the slow fade between the two. Yeah. Thought, like, that's really well done. But talking about the mere opposites, you really see it in the dialogue when he's talking about I just want to save some of these people. You can eat all the souls you want, basically, is what yeah. they're offering each other. You really saw the personality differences between them and the dialogue, too, not yeah. just the artwork. Now, I, I like, I'm like you, I mean, I've read some Ghost Rider, because every once in a great while, I just get really edgy, and I'm like, motherfucker, I'm going to read some Ghost Rider. <laughs> and I just... Fucking it, Lord. <laughs> the one thing about Ghost Rider was just like... I don't know. It just always was like really doomy. He, he and always felt like a gimmick more than yeah. a character to me. And in this right here, it brought a whole new thing into it, like to a new perspective on the Ghost Rider character that makes me want to go back and read it and think like with this like apply like, that knowledge, this, apply this yeah. knowledge to those. It's like this is what is going on in their head. Exactly. Yeah. And I love that because now now you get a sense. You see these two and they're talking to each other and you're going, "This is what's going on in Ghost Rider's head." When we see him and he's. He's fighting, you know, in that, like, the Spirit of Vengeance storyline with Spider-Man and Venom crossover. Um, like, that's what's going on in his fucking head. Is he has Johnny, who's sitting here trying to be, like, you know, somewhat of a decent human being, but just an ordinary human that isn't really, you know, just trying to yeah. be like, uh. And then you got Ghost Rider just like, I'm fucking starving. Yeah, I'm like, like, I agree, man. And I like that, again, like, we talk about the humanity. We get to see that the Ghost Rider himself has the Ghost Rider, the Spirit of Vengeance has its own personality, and so does Johnny Blaze. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to determine when you're just reading Johnny Blaze as Ghost Rider, who's really talking. Is it Johnny or is exactly. it the Spirit of Vengeance? Fair now point. you get the idea that they really are kind of a, a meshed being mm -hmm. when they're speaking, and mm -hmm. I really like that. And, of course, the end. I thought the end was great. They're going through the seven circles of hell, basically. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Johnny is like, hey, I got this, because apparently, they, I mean, they talked about it in the book, like the seventh circle is your greatest fear. And so he's like, hey, so it's just straight up Johnny Blaze. He walks into this room, and then, you know, it ends the way it ends, and maybe we can talk about it a little bit more off air. But I thought that was fucking brilliant what happens at the very end. And it reminded me a little bit of Hellboy, not going to lie with the... Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So. It did. I noticed that, and I was like, "Yay!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. A little part of me was like, "That's cool. I like that." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I do want to talk a little bit more about that on, at the end of the when we're not on air. Okay, and then I think our last thing we're going to talk about is Dallas wanted to talk about issue one ninety three of Moon Knight. Going off the whole personalities in the head thing. Yeah. Segways with Dallas. Segways. Now. I was waiting for it. Ah. Uh, Moon Knight one ninety three was amazing. I've never been a Moon Knight reader. Um, I've been reading this this current Crazy Runs in the Family series, and this, I believe, is the final issue of that arc. Um, so it picks up right where the last one left off. You know, Mark is about to fight. You know, his uh, it's his father. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, well, no, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Sun God. It's this, yeah. yeah, I forget his name. Uh, it's not Conchu because that's that's mark but um right it's the um, artwork is so great yeah, the artwork is, is great i i kind of prefer it to smallwood even though smallwood and lemire's um run i thought was overall better so far but mm -hmm. i do prefer this artwork i like it because it looks uh simple yet detailed yeah it's it like, is it's, and it works it's proportional yeah. and I, I remember talking about this earlier with a couple of customers that were here this morning i was like um Small woods, small woods felt like a little two dimensional. Yeah. The the artwork, but it's it worked because there's kind of this surrealist uh, element to it. Mm -hmm. So it's okay for everything to feel a little bit off kilter and not too real. This, it feels much more realistic. So and, and then it kind of gets in the way of my understanding of this book. If you want to keep going on about um, it, but since you haven't read it, do you want no, me we, to avoid? I, I did oh, you read did? it? You yeah. Did? Oh yeah, that's right. Um, so it's raw. It's his that's father, it, yeah. raw. 
And so it's basically the battle between son and father, and they've been doing this for ages. And it, the way it ended, I was expecting you know, a fist fight, and that's what it starts out as, a circle pit of fire and then a crowd around them, and they're fighting. They're and trading blows. Just, and Mark's getting his ass kicked because Raw's using his fire. So, I mean, he's, like, catching his fist and burning it, and he burns the side of his head off, like, like this hair, and, like, he's, like, singed. It looks a little and, Wolverine-y. And Mark gets his tooth punched out, and he's looking real rough. And then just out of nowhere, you see this inner dialogue in his head, which they've done this run. You see every personality he has having a conversation. And they're and talking. And Khonshu's one of them, too. Right. And, yeah. and they're basically asking him, like, what can we do? Like, what, what can we do to help Mark in this situation? And they're discussing it. And they're like, their power comes from faith of the god, that god, specifically. And so they basically, instead of channeling Moon Knight, which he doesn't have his powers anymore, channeling those powers, he decides to make Ra question his powers. So that the and human... His faith in himself as a god. So the human that's holding captive Ra be- doesn't believe in himself anymore, so loses the ability to channel the fire, and then Mark just beats the shit, beats out, the of shit out of him. Yeah. Shit, that's pretty badass. And but what's cool is I don't know if this that's is... That's what we yeah. are... I don't know if this is happening in his head because there's that part with his daughter at the beginning that makes me go, because he's acting like he, his daughter's telling the story and he's just living out her right. story. So I don't know if this is actually taking place in real life or if this is all actually just some delusion in his head. I'm not sure if it's a delusion. She's telling a story. He's telling a story. It, it made this issue specifically. None of the other issues have made me question it. Right. Up until the very beginning page, one of his personalities is sitting with his daughter and then it goes straight into Mark and they, and, somewhere and else. And his daughter and Mark are obviously not in the same setting no, as no, far no, as no. the book goes. And I, I think he's having a discussion with his daughter's mother. I can't remember her name at the moment. But uh, she says uh, she's got you playing talk pretend yet. And, like, even though it's not directly saying, hey, this is fake, it just kind of made me question, like, is well, she talk pretending? He's also pretending? like, we could sell this on Netflix. You right. know? I'm just like, it, what? Yeah, this panel specifically, they made a joke about Netflix, about how this co- this – Storyline's so convoluted and crazy that it could work on Netflix. There were two panels Which is specifically. Almost like a meta joke because everyone's talking about a Moon Knight on Netflix, like how well yeah, that series I would, would I would work. be pumped about oh, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, there has been some talk about it recently, yeah. but that's another topic another time. But the best panel is this one right here, and I'm showing Josh. It's when he gets him to question it and starts beating the crap out of him in this scene right here. You can Very see a little Moon Knight, yeah. Oh, and nice. It, it was an excellent run. I'm definitely going to continue reading it. Um, don't plan to stop anytime soon unless it tanks. I mean, it's, maybe I need to start reading some more Moon Knight. It's good. It's interesting. I've because read Bendis' really, run. I've read Lemire's run. I've been reading Bemis' run. I'm actually – that's one of the things I have uh, queued up for me to read is uh, uh, read Bendis' run of Moon Knight just because – Bendis' run is nothing like Lemire's or Bemis's. I'll yeah. tell you that. It's nothing like it. They're yeah. very different Moon Knight. Well, I, I don't know. I just really like the whole like multiple personalities thing too. It they really utilize. Yeah, it I, I mean, because like the way that you describe it from this storyline, it reminds me of like like not like completely, but like Split. A little bit. I fucking I guess love yeah. Split. That was. A, yeah. I think I was telling you, Dallas. Like, um, it, Lemire is gonna be writing Sentry, which is also a multiple personality yeah. type yeah, I'm, character. I'm like, that's gonna be a really I cool forgot run. Sentry. I, I forgot that that Sentry is gonna get a solo run. Yeah, and I don't remember. God, for the life of me, I can't Lemire's remember who did his right. other series that I I don't have a trade of anymore. But I'm gonna have to order it. But that fucking series is so good. It's so damn good. And if you can read that as a companion piece to Bendis' new Avengers, mm, even better. So. Excellent. Pick it up. Yeah, I I would recommend out of this week. I would definitely recommend Saga, Daredevil six hundred, um, Moon Knight, and Ghost Rider: Damnation. That's a solid recommendation list. I mean, yeah, that's a solid <coughs> recommendation list. Everyone was very quiet there. Yeah, okay, the, only reason, the only reason why I got quiet because like today I wasn't able to read um, all the books that I normally would have read, and so I can't really say because I've only really read two new books this week, and that's. Uh, Ghost Rider Damnation, which I agree. Pick it up. It's a good little and it's yep. and it's fun because you don't really need to, you know, read other things. No, I mean right, you like, can read you can Damnation. You still read it and but, enjoy it. But, like take me for example. I haven't read Damnation. I've just heard your guys' reviews. I have mm-hmm. one and three. I don't have two yet, so I'm waiting to get that. Yeah. But I haven't read it and I wasn't lost at all because I knew what happened yeah. right at the end. But you don't need to know because they explain right after, like, right. hey, we just died. Yeah. That's yeah. all you need to know for that story. Yeah, and uh and I read Champions. I I mean, do what you want with that. Uh, I mean, I would, uh, but I will say this: I haven't read it yet. But I would suggest picking up Jessica Jones, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bendis's last issue of a character Who? that he has created. Bendis, he's a little guy. Okay, a okay. Writer. Next week we'll talk about Jessica Jones and Irredeemable. All right, so next week we'll definitely be hitting those topics. Um, does anybody else have anything to say before we, we sign out here? 
Um, all right, guys. Well, we really appreciate <laughs> you uh, you listening. We hope that this was informative. Maybe it piqued your interest in a couple of the new books that are out, a couple of new titles, maybe some of the ones that maybe stay away from. I don't know. But if you guys liked it, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, share this with any other other comic book friends. And, of course, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, what the fuck are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Hit it. And, and then hit the bell so you know every Thursday when we upload. <laughs> Uh, if you guys want to find us anything talking about movies, you can always check us out on Stardust. You can check me, Jake, out at Comic Relief Eleven, no spaces. What about you, Josh? Where they can check you out? Um, at Jam Twelve Sixty Seven on Pornhub. And what about Stardust? Oh, um, Jam Twelve Sixty Seven. I use it for it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> if you want to find me on Instagram, use that. You want to find me on Brazzers, do that. <laughs> All right. And then Dallas, what about you? Where can the kids find you? Hellblazer Three Two Three. Or on the playground with his dick out. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We will see you next week.